Hello. Today we would like to discuss accelerating the design of switching mode power supplies for power electronics design by using a digital twin. We will illustrate this idea with a real-world reference design, a transform 4 kilowatt AC to DC converter. Pretty much everyone in power electronics uses reference designs in one way or another, and everyone does at least some simulation. And there is always this gray area, when do you move from simulation to a physical prototype? We discussed this in a previous video using a Rome reference design as an example. The trick is, if you prototype too soon, you may end up doing several iterations of build and test, and this can be very costly both in terms of time and money, as well as time to market. But with limited simulation tools and models, you can only learn so much without real hardware. Enter the digital twin. The concept is to use a full suite of simulation tools that together cover just about every aspect of design, from fast analog simulation, to detailed transient analysis, to electromagnetic extraction of layout parasitics. If your software reference design includes models at all these levels of abstraction, and your simulation environment has all these tools, we call that set of models a digital twin of the physical prototype. In fact, Keysight has such a tool suite for power electronics design as part of our full library of analog, digital, and power device modeling and simulation tools. These tools are part of a complete solution flow from Keysight. Measurement instruments to characterize wide band gap devices, tools that create models from that data, the Power Electronics Pro or PE Pro design and simulation environment, which is today's topic, and of course, instruments to measure the physical prototype. Now, we are working with leaders in power electronics to create digital twins of key reference designs, such as the Rome DC to DC converter we mentioned earlier, and this transform AC to DC converter, and there are more to come. Today, we will focus on setting up a PE Pro Pathwave ADS simulation workspace, loading in models for transforms AC to DC converter, using their fourth generation gallium nitride power transistors and exploring this digital twin. To try this at home, you will need some links, the user guide and the workspace. If you aren't a licensed user yet, you can request a 45 day loaner license and you can get information on transforms designed directly from them. Now we're gonna dig in. We will use three aspects of the digital twin approach, transient analysis, electromagnetic solvers for extracting parasitics, and harmonic balance analysis. Together, these tools can get you to where you can confidently build a physical prototype. All this, from device data sheets to different levels of simulation in test benches to visualizing results, is in one tool, no file translations or multiple user interfaces. We have just added inner layer near field visualization. It works with both 2D method of moments and 3D finite element solvers and offers several different ways of presenting data, including animations, so you can visualize current crowding, thermal issues, and field strengths. So let's see all of this in practice. Keysight has already loaded curves from the transistor data sheets, extracted the device parameters, and built both ideal and spice level device models for PE Pro. These models are already in the digital twin. Once we have the device models, we directly read the board layout of Transform's 4 kilowatt bridgeless totem pole converter evaluation board, with power factor correction, by the way, into PE Pro. Here we list five simulation cases at descending levels of abstraction, using various combinations of simple ideal or full-on spice transistor models without or with models of extractive parasitics. You can see the runtime for four AC cycles ranges from around a minute to over three hours. The design needs power factor correction to get efficiency, low total harmonic distortion, and compliance with standards. Transform uses a digital power factor correction circuit in their reference design. But to speed up simulation, we designed an ideal PFC analog circuit and put it in the test bench replacing the digital circuit in the original design. The substitution works well at most moderate to heavy loads. 
This is an example of things you can do in PE Pro to get the best trade-off of simulation time against fidelity. We will come back to this point in a few minutes. Now let's see what we have in this screenshot. At top center is the top level test bench, including probes, source voltages, load resistors, and simulation parameters. At upper right, we have three versions of the AC to DC converter circuit at different levels of abstraction. Lower right is our ideal PFC circuit, and lower left is the SPICE level model of the pulse width modulated gate driver circuit. It drives the models at upper right. Finally, the rest of the screen is full of settings to control transient analysis, options, and equations used to calculate results such as efficiency, duty cycle, and timing. Here are some results. You click on one of the three circuit models on the right side of the control panel screen. We chose the bottom one, the simplest, and start the simulation. In about 13 minutes, you get the results on the right. We see some statistics on top, including power at about 4 kilowatts, distortion at 0.027, and 388 volt out with 18.5 volt ripple. Below that, we get graphs of AC in, DC out, sense voltage, and the PFC modulation voltage. Remember, this was with ideal power transistor models and no parasitics. The simulation is quick, and as we shall see later, quite accurate. But it is risky to push ideal models too far. For instance, we noticed when we were building the digital twin that the physical circuit is sensitive to gate noise. Transform takes three steps to deal with this. They use a series ferrite bead on the boost transistor gates. They suppress gate switching near the AC0 crossing, and they drive the gate hard to 12 volts, well above the typical 4 volt threshold. Now to illustrate why you need different levels of abstraction in the digital twin, we did an experiment. We removed all three of these provisions from the design and re-ran the simulation to see if we could observe any instability. The run indicated some reduction in efficiency, but as you can see, the simulation with ideal power transistor models and no parasitics shows a quite stable output. We repeated this experiment at many different initial gate currents. Here you see 5 volt and 12 volt gate drives. Still, no instability. Now let's include parasitics. The story changes. Here you see a run at 12 volt gate drive on the left and 5 volt on the right. If your eyes are excellent, you will notice that with parasitics in the model, the efficiency drops from the ideal model's 98% to more like 96% at 5 volt drive. But more important, at 5 volt drive, we are starting to see, I've circled here in blue, some instability. We couldn't have found this with the simpler model. So Transform was right to add those three features. Even without them though, the simulation suggests that there is enough margin in Transform's design to keep the instability from showing up in a physical circuit. So we see that the more detailed models can reveal otherwise hidden circuit behavior. But how did the different models' results compare to physical measurements? Here you see plots of efficiency on top and total harmonic distortion below at various input voltages with and without parasitics, compared to actual measured data from the reference design data sheets. As you can see, the simulated results are all quite a good match to the measured results for these parameters. Starting with the Reference Design's digital twin, you can explore what-if scenarios, make component substitutions, or even significant design changes and explore the circuit behavior in detail. Without the digital twin, much of this exploration would require a physical prototype with all its issues of cost, time, difficult modification, and trouble getting a probe in where you need it. An environment this sophisticated deserves full support. Keysight maintains a YouTube channel just for power electronics designers with how-to episodes on circuit design, measurement techniques, use of reference designs, use of PE Pro, and more. We offer consulting services on use of our PD-1000 and PD-1500 power device measuring systems. Consultants in Japan and the USA offer modeling services, 
and we have training for ADS users. We believe that using digital twins in PE Pro can significantly improve time to market and design quality. Thank you for your time today. We hope this has been informative and we'd like to close with some more links, two for ADS workspaces and one to a video on the benefits of simulating with parasitics in the model. Thanks and good day. Thank you.